and it's to promote Iloilo as a food destination, a travel destination. Hey guys, we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Please subscribe. What's up, my Buhai squad? How are you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys, welcome to a new vlog here at the Mabuhay Squad farmhouse. That's right, here in the Philippines, where my partner RJ and I live. Please excuse me, I kind of look like Jesus right now um, because, guys, it is hot. I just got back from the gym, got back from a run outside, and honestly, this is, it's so hot. I think it's like 40 degrees Celsius, which is 104 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now, here in the Philippines. We are deep in our summer right now. Okay, Mabuhay Squad. So, I'm finally going to make kombucha. You guys know kombucha. It's the like fermented black tea drink that I always drink every day. Um, but it can get quite expensive. I buy it here in a can um, and it's imported. So it's like pretty pricey. But I want to try making it myself because apparently we could just keep making it ourselves and you know, it's free. So, okay, let's start. In a medium-sized pot, bring four cups of filtered water to a boil, then turn off heat. Okay, well, I've got boiling water anyway, so I'm just gonna put four cups of boiling water in this bowl. Ooh, I feel like I'm casting a spell. All right. Okay, next, pour entire contents of the tea blend pouch, three tablespoons, into cotton tea bag, which I have here, and add to pot. Hold on to the empty tea blend pouch. You'll need it later to complete your brew notes. OMG, okay. This is a cool pouch, I guess. So, kombucha is this weird creature, which I'll show you in a sec, that you add to like black tea to ferment it. So what we're doing now is we are going to brew our black tea. So, as per instructions, I'm gonna Pour the black tea into this pouch. Yes. Like so. Let's draw the strap and add it to our cauldron. Yes. Ooh, it's like witchcraft. Child devotion. Okay. Let the tea steep for five to seven minutes. Then remove the tea bag and discard tea leaves. Rinse and dry tea bag for next use. Okay. So we gotta keep this tea bag always. So five minutes. I'll see you guys in five minutes. Okay guys, so it's been about seven minutes. This tea has steeped, nice black tea. Um, so it says I gotta get rid of this, throw away the bag. Well, keep the bag, throw away the tea rinds, but I'm gonna just put the tea rinds in my plants. So I'm not gonna throw that away. But we're gonna need this tea bag for the next time we, we brew black tea. All right, so the next step is we add entire contents of organic sugar pouch, which is one cup, into the pot and stir. So this here is organic white sugar. You can't, apparently you can't use black, brown sugar or cocoa sugar or anything like that. It literally has to be white sugar because the creature, which I'm gonna show you in a sec, has evolved to only process this white sugar. Now, the thing about this white sugar is this will all be eaten by the creature. So when the kombucha is done, it really won't be sweet. It's not like full of sugar. This is just food for the creature, which I'm about to show you. Okay, I gotta just stir this. So it looks like this. I gotta keep stirring until all this white sugar is dissolved. Ooh, this looks delicious. This is food for our creature, which will create the kombucha. Okay, so now I, apparently I have to pour it into the jar, all of this. Yes. Done. Mmm. Fill the brew jar with eight cups of cold filtered water. Jar should be three fourths full. Okay, done. Okay, then it says adhere the temperature gauge right here to the side of the jar and ensure the temperature reads between 68 to 86 Fahrenheit. If it's still too warm, add half cup more of cold water. Okay, Fahrenheit. US, time to convert to metric. All right, ripping this off and sticking it to the side of our kombucha jar. Right there, right there. Ooh, 
See? Cool. And it reads 68 to 86. It's a little colder. 68 to 66 ish. This will warm up. We're in the Philippines. All right, next. Um, add entire contents of the kombucha culture and liquid starter pouch to the jar. Gently stir. Okay, guys, this is it. Are you ready to see the creature? Guys, this here is called the scoby. See it? It's this weird gelatinous blob. Now, this creature is actually like three different species. So it's a yeast, which is a fungus, and two species of bacteria, acetic acid bacteria and lactic acid bacteria. And they form this weird gelatinous creature. And those are the life forms that ferment this sweet black tea mixture. All right, guys, let's unleash the beast into our kombucha mix. All right, beast, time to live free. Feast, feast, yes, feast on our sweetened black organic tea. Yeah, ooh, it, it's, oh, it smells sour, guys. It's like vinegarish. Wow, look at it, it's like a, it looks like a dead jellyfish. See it, guys? Ooh, the scoby. What a weird life form. That's not a plant. It's like a fungus and a bacteria. I have to stir. So let's stir it around. Sorry there. Enjoy my scoby, enjoy. Now apparently I could split this, I can cut it up and then create another brewing kombucha jar. We can have like seven different kombucha jars going. And so I could just finish one whole jar every single day. So that on rotation, you know what I mean? Okay, I'm afraid to disturb it, sorry. Round and round you go, I'm sorry. Yay, little roller coaster ride for you there, Scoby. Sweet, and that Scoby, guys, is gonna grow. It's so neat, it's just gonna multiply. It's gonna eat all that sugar and like black tea and ferment it. I'm gonna create a slight alcohol in there. Okay, and apparently it says, follow directions on back of pH test strips, color chart to conduct pH test. It should read 4.5 or below. I mean, see, there's like a pH strip kit. Um, and then you just compare the color. I trust that it's okay. I mean, let's skip. <laughs> Cover the jar with the cotton cloth and seal with the rubber band. Set the plastic jar aside. It is not needed for the, oh, jar lid aside. Okay, wait, I'm gonna place this cloth over our kombucha jar and then sealing it with a rubber band, like so. Wow, who discovered this? That's my question. All right, there we go. And then next it says, uh, using the wet erase marker right here, fill out your brew notes feature on the side of your brew jar. Ooh, it's like school. Your brew, ID your brew by name or number, date it and see your tea pouch label for the amount and type of tea used in this kit. Oh, so you can keep track. Okay, so guys, what should we name this kombucha? I know, let's call it Scoby Do. <laughs> Scoby Do. All right, Scoby Do. Brew date? Be, what's the date? April 12th? 13th. April 13th. April 13th already? Holy, this year's flying by. Okay, so it's brewed April. 13th and tea used black tea three tablespoons of black tea all right and that's it it says first place your brew jar in a warm place out of direct sunlight with plenty of airflow no closed cupboards leave it there for eight to ten days and do not move it okay i'll just place it somewhere here on this counter um, by day 8 or 10, you will see that a new cream-colored layer has grown on the top of your brew. This is your new culture. While trying not to disturb the culture, gently slide the pipette down along the side of the jar into the brew. Pull out a sip of the kombucha to taste test. Ooh, okay, so that's what this is for. See? And you can taste test it. Taste every few days until your ideal kombucha flavor is reached. 
too tart, simply sweeten during the bottling and brew for fewer days next time. Too sweet, put the cloth back on and let it brew for a few more days. I see. Okay, so basically we just gotta keep testing it around day eight to 10. Um, and if it's still too sweet, just let it ferment some more. If it's too sour, next time don't like wait too long before harvesting your kombucha. But yay, welcome to the Mabuhai Squad farmhouse, Scobie Doo. <laughs> All right guys, so apparently uh, this needs to be kept in a low traffic area of the home and kept kind of warm. Also away from food preparation, garbage and things like that. So I guess that's to ensure that it doesn't spoil as easily. So I decided to put it here, um, just here in this corner, away from direct sunlight in our entertainment room. See, low traffic area. Um, so it should be good here. So apparently we can also use oolong and green tea. I used black for that because that's what came with the kit, but you're allowed to use, yeah, black, oolong and green teas, which I have, so yay. Apparently, you can even blend the teas and kind of experiment so you produce different flavors in your kombucha. Kombucha I love because it's a good probiotic. So that scoby, all those like little microbes, you kind of swallow those microbes and then they live in your gut and they help you, you know, they keep you healthy. Gut microbiome, guys, so important for mental health, sleep, overall well-being, digestion, immunity. Um, they're linking a healthy gut microbiome to like, you know, lowered uh, mental age-related diseases like, um, what was it? Was it Parkinson's or something like that? Go Google, guys. Healthy gut microbiome. And I've been like obsessed with probiotics lately. So guys, I wanna show you this. We finally set up our egg incubation, our incubator. So it's set to 37.8 degrees C, which apparently is what's needed to hatch these eggs. These are our chicken eggs. These small ones are the eggs of our silkies. And these three larger ones are the eggs of our Rhode Island Reds. I'm gonna go outside and see if they have more eggs. Um, they're, our other chickens, like the native chickens, also have eggs, so I gotta collect those, and I'm gonna put them in here, um, and hopefully they hatch. I can't wait. This time we're gonna try to hatch these eggs artificially, because last time we did that outside, like let the chickens hatch their own eggs, the chicks ended up dying because of like outdoor reasons, like fire ants and stuff. So we're gonna try to raise the chicks indoors, safe from fire ants and like other elements outside until they're large enough to move to an outdoor coop. So that's the plan now. And what's cool about this incubator, guys, is it rotates the eggs every now and then. Isn't that cool? It can hold, I think, up to 20 or 40 eggs, something like that. See it? And then it's got like a water portion to it for humidity. So cool. Here's the aviary. I was looking at a few of the birds. There's the... There's one of the diamond doves. It's singing right now. There's another diamond dove up there. And another. They're so cute. And then down there is a Goldian finch, just preening. All right, guys, it's a beautiful sunset. Just finished swimming. And I wanna head over to the farm lot because I think RJ's there. I wanna collect some eggs, put them in the incubator. Let's do this. Guys, it's beautiful on the farm side. You won't believe the construction that's happening. First of all, hello plant beds, doing so well. Look at that. And here, just starting, I see that they've planted some kangkong. That's leftover kangkong stems. That will just flourish. But guys, look, they're building more cages. New enclosure there. This, these are the bunnies and Guinea pigs, I'm thinking the guinea pigs will move to their own enclosure soon. There's an enclosure right there, new. This is a new enclosure. Guys, wow, another extension for the chickens. Amazing. We have so much room now for these chickens. Okay, this hen right there is sitting on a whole bunch of eggs that I want to collect some from. I, I'm afraid to reach underneath her because I think she'll peck me. 
Guys, look. <laughs> Here comes Magnus. I think he thinks I have banana. I don't have banana. Gosh, you're so beautiful. Look at his blue skin. Oh my. And now here comes Adam. I don't have banana, guys. Next time. Promise. Promise to bring it. Okay, guys. I am going to go into the aviary. First door closed. Second door, here I go. Inside the aviary. Here come the birds. Hi birds, just don't land on me, please. I don't have claws. Your claws will be too much. I'm just here to look at the nest of the pheasants. Oh wow, okay, so here's the nest of the pheasant. Ew, there's a piece of poo. But look, there's an egg. <gasps> Shall I get it, guys? I think so. Hi. Hi. Hi there, who are you? Gabriella? Yeah, that looks like you, Gabs. You look like Marcelo. Where is Clara? Clara, oh, there she is, way up there in the corner. Hi, Clara. Making all that noise, <laughs> screaming at the sunset. All right, okay, I'm gonna grab an, I'm gonna grab an egg because I wanna put it in our incubator. Or should I let the pheasants raise them naturally? Oh guys, she's got several in here. Look, there's like one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm gonna take, let's take, sorry, I'm gonna take two. This one, and I'll take this one. We'll try to hatch these pheasant eggs, and then we'll let her hatch those two. The two that are in here. She'll probably lay more. Okay, look at them. Wow, they're small. These two are just for insurance. In case the ones that she raises, the female pheasant, don't survive. At least we'll have these for insurance. Guys, I'm being told that our cherry tomatoes are okay. Oh, these peppers are okay to harvest too. Let's, let's pick it. And guys, look, look at our chili peppers. But they're telling me that the cherry tomatoes are hinog, which means ripe. Oh, there! Sweet! Mmm! I can't wait to eat these. Even the eggplants! Whoa! Hey, Rizal. What's going on? This is Rizal, our giant poodle. And there's Brittany with Be, with RJ. Yeah, the pheasant eggs. I only took two. And then I left two in the nest because I want to like incubate them in case those two don't survive or the other ones don't the naturally laid ones don't or incubated ones don't survive at least we'll have these two okay i'm gonna put them in thank you for accompanying me to the door i'm gonna put them in the incubator and then my speedos guys but that's the good thing about living on your own you can be like naked in the house well not completely naked because we have our house manager and staff walking around Okay guys, so I'm just gonna carefully place these two eggs. Oh, they are small. Like maybe here. There. All right. And I'll put all the eggs of the same kind, like on the same side, on the same roll so that we don't get confused. All right. Pheasant eggs right there. See, pheasant eggs. Silky eggs. By the way, this got cracked and dented, but I did a little research and apparently we could use white school glue to like, as long as the membrane doesn't break, the egg might still survive. So I glued that dent with school glue and let's hope it hatches. And then these really dirty eggs, but they belong to the uh, Rhode Island Reds. Yes, 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 hatch. Hatch, my baby's hatch. All right, put on a shirt and some shorts. I'm gonna go on the farming side, do farmer stuff. I can't wait to harvest those tomatoes and eat them, even without washing, because it definitely contains very essential bacteria, um, which is good for gut microbiome. All right, let's go. Now, some of you might be asking, okay, so when, you, when those eggs hatch, What's the deal? Are, are we going to keep them? Are we going to eat them? 
Um, not sure yet. For sure the pheasants we're not gonna eat. Can you eat pheasants? I'm not sure, I think you can, but. Um, as for the chickens, we'll probably keep some as pets, but like for the larger chickens, like the R Rhode Island Reds, let's just say we won't be naming all the babies. A lot of birds. I know, I noticed. This is the time of the year, the summer, in the evenings that they come out. While I was swimming, guys, all kinds of birds are just gathering in the treetops. I love, love this flower. Isn't that such a cute, beautiful flower? Gorgeous, gorgeous. All right. Sorry, Rizal, not allowed because last time you were here, you escaped through the forest and went to our neighbor's lot to like try to talk to the other dogs. So, dogs not allowed here. Okay, so let's try to harvest the tomatoes. See, we got these normal tomatoes. Ooh, they look weird. But these, to these cherry tomatoes look awesome. Okay, I'm gonna go in here and grab this stem because it's ready. Wow, it doesn't even look real. Okay, but how do I, how do I break this? Uh, I don't want to kill the plant. I wish I had scissors. Fine, I'm just gonna pull it. See, like that. Oh, how neat. Sweet. Wow, we did it. Beautiful. Homegrown cherry tomatoes. How awesome. Oh, there's more here, I see. This is like here. And then here. <gasps> There's more here too! Uh, wow, it's like Easter eggs. Oh, I have to wash them because I didn't wash my hands after touching those eggs. Oh, there's more here! The little cherry tomatoes. Oh, this one's black. This one looks like an eyeball. Okay, sorry. Oops, no! I'm dropping some. And flies are going on my face. All right. Yay! Rizal's like, what is that? Cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna wash it and eat it. Do you want it? Yay, farmer stuff. All right, guys. So I'm just washing the tomatoes in some, like a salt water solution. Like, if I didn't touch those eggs, I probably would have just eaten them straight away, but oh well. Okay. So, let's try one. It's so cute. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Mmm. Let's make pasta sauce, guys. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Mmm. That one was extra mmm. Oh my gosh, I love tomatoes. Mmm. Mmm. These tomatoes are good. Mmm. Babe, try these tomatoes. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Mmm. I could eat a whole bowl of this. Wow. And we grew this. Pesticide free. It's good, right? Good, good. <laughs> he wants another. It's so good, guys. Wow. Mmm. <laughs> RJ's smiling. It's small. Huh? Because it's a small. He likes it because it's small. Yeah, but the flavor is just something else. Yeah, I think it's the fact that it like matured on the plant. It ripened on the plant, maybe. <coughs> it tastes so good. Mmm. Babe, imagine making a tomato sauce with this for pasta. Mmm. Yeah, we need more. And oh, some of the tomatoes are ready too. Some of the big tomatoes are also ready. Mmm, let's make our own pasta sauce, yay! Like the Italians. Guys, something came. Oh, it's for the chickens. Feeder. Oh, feeder. Sweet. Mmm, guys, I'm on like a fresh whole food kick right now. Grapes. Now this is something we can't really grow in the Philippines. We can grow wild grapes in the Philippines, but not good enough. Apparently, the best grapes come from places that have cold. Now I asked a Japanese worker at a winery in Japan and he says that because of Philippines tropical climate mm, it's vulnerable to like tropical diseases or something so farmers growing grapes have a hard time. Mm. 
Mm -mm -mm. But I love grapes. They're so good. One thing we do grow locally, mangoes. Oh! Have you guys had Philippine mangoes? If you have not, you're missing half your life. Mangoes are just something else, guys. Seriously. I love the fruits here in the Philippines. It's a fruit lover's haven in this country. Seriously. Mmm. <gasps> Mmm, 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 mmm. Lord, how did you think of this fruit? Seriously, mmm. It's just so good. From the texture to the, the flavor, the moment your tongue touches it, to when you chew it, to the aftertaste. Mmm, mmm. Guys, mangoes. Mm. Seriously, if an alien came to visit Earth and there was only one fruit it was allowed to try, I'd be like, welcome to Earth, try this. Mm. Compared to that mango, these grapes are like kindergarten. And this mango is like a university professor, you know what I'm saying? That's the difference. What's up my Buhai squad? How are you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys, we're not in... We're not at home, obviously. <laughs> we're here in oh Ilo Ilo at Richmond Hotel. Um, I have a performance tomorrow for something really important. But guys, look. So cute. Look at this. Every time we come here, they've got awesome snacks. Yum. San Pellegrino. Love. Even alcohol. And look at these cute tags. It says visit Iloilo. Oh, there sweet. Visit Iloilo, guys. And guys, they even prepared my favorite ice cream already. Like, it's still cold. Mm. Oh my gosh, guys. Oh, I love this ice cream. It's so good. It's called Bye Bye Ice Cream. It's hand pulled. Is it hand pulled? Hand like churned. Mmm. 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 RJ's like. This is good. What's good? Inasal empanadida. Inasal empanadida. Yeah. Show them. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. So okay, I'm gonna eat that in a sec. <gasps> Guys, I love coming to Iloilo because of the food. The best food. I'm sorry. Mmm. 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 Guys. Mmm. This. What is it called? Empa. In empanadita. Inasal. So like barbecued chicken or something. It's so good! Mm. Mm. They know how to do food here at this hotel, guys. And this presentation. I know! Filipino food. Seriously. Ilongo Filipino food in particular. Wow, sweet! Panaderia de Molo. Quality biscuits. A cute painting. Wow, this is cute. And a bag. Sweet. So guys. Tomorrow, um, I'll be performing the tourism song that um, I released, um, did a parody of, it, it's actually a parody of an Ilongo song. My heart and my soul in Ilo Ilo, so malambing the people, I love Ilongo. And it's to promote Ilo Ilo as a food destination, a travel destination. Um, a destination for the Dinagyang festival, which is huge, which sadly we missed. But this is the start of the, officially the start of their campaign, Visit Iloilo. Um, because when people come to the Philippines, they usually visit, well, Manila. They visit Boracay um, and any of the other beach destinations like uh, Palawan, uh, anyway, Coron, El Nido. However, um, Iloilo is definitely a must visit, guys. The food here alone, like this is a foodie haven here in Iloilo. Um, and there's so much to do here. 
um, and they want to promote it to the world. So people, more people stop by Iloilo and they make it a must visit when they visit the Philippines. And we love staying here at the Richmond. It's just amazing. Five star hotel, gorgeous location, amazing food here. Their cook is incredible. Um, and I mean, look, look at the beds. The rooms are gorgeous. Now, for those of you who follow the vlogs, you guys already know, RJ and I also own an agricultural farm here on this island of Panay, three hours outside of the city. Um, but sadly, we're not visiting the farm this time. Um, promise we will soon, the next time we come back. Hi, Miss Natalie. Great to see you again. Nice to see you. Guys, this is Miss Natalie who runs Richmond Hotel. Um, what is this? This is a, a, a outdoor barbecue? Yes, it's our outdoor barbecue. So we're cooking. You can barbecue your own food mm. here. So we have scallops, <gasps> we have chicken. Scallops, chicken. Yeah, we have scallops. Mm. Mussels, mussels. Yay. We have um, tuna and blue marlin. Oh, wow. And of course, some pork barbecue. Oh, All this looks amazing. Mmm. <gasps> All of this is cooked now. Yeah, this is cooked now. I see. But if you want, you this can... is the cooked stuff. Yeah. But you could also do it yourself. More, oh. If you want to experience cooking your own, you can. Cool, very interactive. So your... Love very it. Easy. Oh, and it smells so good. There's oh. Lechon baka. Lechon baka? Yes, beef. This is beef. Guys, this is chef, chef, chef. beef. We have ensalada. Oh, different ensalada. kinds of ensalada and different kinds of quinila. We have fish and shrimp. Mmm. Guys, quinila is like the Filipino version of um, ceviche. Ceviche. Yeah. It's like our, our ceviche. See, look at that. Mm. So this is... This one's the fish. Fish. Yeah, and we have the shrimp over here. And there's the shrimp. Oh, wow. I My mouth is watering. <laughs> and then we've got tinola, tinola pampano. The pampano yes. That's my favorite fish. Mm. So tinola pampano with pampano fish. Wow, yeah. that looks so good. <laughs> Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff here. Yeah, Valenciana Ilongo. Valenciana Ilongo. With sweet chili mixed seafood. Oh my, look at the crabs, guys. Yeah. Mm. And we have chicken and pork adobo Ilongo. Oh, this is an Ilongo version of yes, adobo. Uh, that, the one that uses a lot of achuete or anato. Oh, achuete and anato. What is that? Uh, it's like the seed. The, the seed oh, that adds yes. To that. Right, okay. Mmm. Yum, guys, look. And of course, the Halo Halo station. Oh, yes, Halo Halo, guys. I'm gonna have some of this before bed. Yum. Guys, this all looks so good. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Oh my gosh, guys. Look at this. Scallop. Mm. So good. Mm. Let's try the, the mussels. Mm. Oh my gosh. Mm. Why? It's like sweet. Barbecue chicken, guys. Mmm, mmm. There's like a tinge of lemon there. Mmm. Mm. Let's try the beef lechon. Wow, lechon, but it's beef. Guys, I told you, Ilongo food is so good. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Okay, guys, let's try the ceviche. Look at it, it's like shrimp. Mm. <laughs> Ensalada. That's eggplant. With like onions and hot peppers. Mm. Wow. My blue high squad. This food here at the Richmond Hotel. Five Mabuhai stars. <laughs> Be, how's the tinola? Oh my god. It's so good, right? So good. Guys, their pampano tinola, amazing. So good. The local vegetables, the pampano fish. It's no wonder that Iloilo won Creative City of Gastronomy Award, UNESCO Award. Throughout all the Philippines, like, it was Iloilo specifically that won that award. Even beating out other countries. Good morning, Mabuhay Squad. All right, guys. I have to sing now. Gotta perform. Um, check out the event. The 
There's a lot of people here. People from the hospitality and travel industry, different companies, agencies, airlines. It's just, that's the stage. Oh my gosh, that was so awesome. Thank you, dancers. You guys were awesome. Yay. And guys, I'd also like you to meet Sir Dante, who wrote and composed the music for that parody. So he Thank wrote you. the original called Palabira. Palabira El Hilo. Palabira El Hilo. Thank yeah. you, Sir Dante. I love that song. Thank you. Yeah. Great to meet you in person. Yay. Guys, he's from Gimaraz. He, he, he has a uh, Tutu salt company with coconut. I showed you guys that product. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Mike. Yes. She does global Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for work. All right, guys. After a fun show, rewarding myself with a banana split. But check out their banana split. I already ate half of it. <laughs> it's like... What even is this? It's like a a different type of turon or something. Like a banana pastry with ice cream, chocolate bits, and like a granola mm, with little flowers in it. It's so good with like a caramel. Oh my goodness. This is so good. Guys, the Richmond Hotel food has been spot on. Honestly, this may as well be a five-star hotel the food menu is amazing it's even worth coming to the hotel to eat that's how good the food is here i've been eating non-stop since i got here i bet this banana like fritter thing is like an elongo wave is this an elongo like preparation of like banana pastry i don't know oh my gosh guys but seriously mmm Mmm. Oh my god. Mmm. Mmm. Guys, this banana split at Richmond Hotel. Five Mabuhay stars. Good morning, Mabuhay squad. How are you doing? Did you sleep well? Guys, back at the farm. Hi. There's Eilish um, feeding the chickens some scraps, extra rice, and I'm gonna try to get some eggs, more eggs, to put into the incubator. Hey guys, I got some food for you. Yep, here. Do you want rice? Here you go. Yum. Look at them, they go crazy. I'm gonna try to get that girl out of there. Yoo-hoo! I got rice for ya! Come on. See? Do you want? Here you go. She's not willing to come out. Here, Kong Kong. There you go, Kong Kong. Um, we got some peelings, some pear peelings. Go. Lots and lots of rice. I gotta mash it up for them if they like it. All mashed up. Come on. That chicken's not willing to move. Come on. Hmm. All right. There you go. The Rhode Island Reds are like, give me some. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. Your enclosure is going to be done soon, rooster. But meanwhile, here, have some rice. All right. Ah. Yes, guys. Hi. Here. Here. Wait. Not in. No, 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 no. Here. Yes, yes, yes. Go. Holy, look at them. Oops, I got some rice on her back. Here you go, you can have all this rice. There you go. Oops. Oh no, I got some on her back. Wait, let me wipe your back. I don't want it sticking there. Okay. And then... I got some of this. Here, Kong Kong. Uh, some peelings. Here, there you go. They really love that rice. Oh, she came out. Yes. 
All right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in the nest now. And abduct. All right. Let's see. Perfect. So, let's take. Oh my, they're still warm. Okay. Uh, I'll take maybe this many. Let's take some of them there. And then these she could just sit on. And these will incubate. Yay! Success! Wow, guys, the Kong Kong is already doing so well. See? Sweet. Grow our veggies, grow. Love this. Alupari. Sweet potato. Yes, go, 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 grow. Yay! All right, guys. Wow. Obviously, no hatched chicks yet. It's still early. But I am happy to add more eggs to our collection here. So, guys, you know, life is pretty fun in that sometimes it's crazy and hectic, and, you know, we're around a lot of people and it's high pressure, and sometimes it's slow, out in nature. And that is what I love about what RJ and I do. And guys, I also love that you all are part of this cool, never-ending adventure and journey of ours here at the Mabuhay Squad Farmhouse. Thank you so much for tuning in to this vlog yet again. And if you haven't yet, be sure to hit the like button as it really helps us a lot. It lets YouTube know that our vlogs are worth sharing to new audiences. And if you haven't yet, do hit that subscribe button. Come join our Mabuhay squad because we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. I'm going to get back downstairs and do more work here at the Mabuhay squad farmhouse. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next vlog. Bye.